What up, everybody? This is Ray Dangs, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. You already knew that, but what you didn't know about I Bet is a new distribution company called Two Loss Distribution. They're the most technologically advanced distributor in the world. They distribute your music to more stores than any distributor out there, and they only charge you $3 a month. Yep, $3 a month. And they don't charge you any money to collect your royalties, so you get 100% of your royalties. Y'all know how some of them distribution companies be asking for, you know, it's distribute with us, but they take 20%. These guys don't take any of that. They charge $3 a month to distribute all your music. And if you use the code GODS, which is on being the bottom of the screen, when you add your discount code, you get three months free. So if you're looking for distribution, you need distribution, you're looking for the best distribution company to work with, Two Loss is the fastest growing distribution company out there. Mess with them. Tell them Ray sent you. You gonna get some money off. Hey, what's up? It's your girl, Tamara, a.k.a. Girl from Harlem. It's your cousin, Juju. And this is Ray Daniels, a.k.a. The Culture Referee. And this is The Guy Show. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, and before we get started, I want to make sure I shout out our sponsors, Toten Carry. Shout out our sponsors, Yoko Vodka. And if you want to be a sponsor, shout out to you too. Just reach out to the team. We got a spot for you. Um, like, subscribe, all those good stuff that keeps the podcast going, that keeps us here on this couch, giving you this content that you're enjoying. So just like, share, send it to a friend, whatever it is. But with that being said, I want to introduce a great friend of mine. Uh, this guy is brilliant. Uh, he's always been at the forefront of the new. I don't even want to say change. I want to say the new because he started off as a DJ. Big DJ, by the way. Not like little DJ playing in clubs, like big brand DJ. I, I played in clubs. Just said, but not like a little DJ that was like local, like big DJ I'm about brand. about 5'11", so yeah. not little. <laughs> <laughs> big DJ became a huge producer uh, and then pivoted into this whole media personality where he sells books. Uh, he has millions of followers all across all platforms and he's an investor. I mean, brother, the guy does everything and he's my brother. So I'm proud to call him that. Everybody give it up for Clinton Sparks. Let's go. Thank you guys. Get, Mr. Thank Get you. Familiar. Thank you in the back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Break, brother, welcome to the blue couch. We Ray appreciate Daniels. having you here. Let's get into it, T. The legend Ray Daniels having me here. Thank you. It's funny you're on my show. I was on your show. I'm on exactly. your show. Oh, look at that. Right? love when that happens. Okay, so I know you started off on radio. You, um, you told us a little story, but I want you to share with the people. Um, what was one of the worst experiences you had doing interviews and why? Uh, did you have that question already or did you just come up with it because I said that? <laughs> we'll <laughs> never know the true answer so, to that uh, one. So, yeah, so I started off doing radio. Well, you know... I started off in my bedroom making music and I would remix popular songs and then I befriended the big, the big DJ uh, in my city and I would give him all the remixes and I'd make a bunch of stuff for him to make his show doper. And he used to tell record labels uh, about my friend Clinton. You should hear the remixes that he made for your songs. And I would hear the phone calls and Ray, you'll get yeah. record execs would be like, cool, what's up? You playing my record? Exactly. Right? So I was like, ah, oh, they don't give a shit about me. So it was like, what do I have to do to make them give a shit about me? So when I heard them saying that, I was like, oh, if I become a DJ, they'll want to be my friend. And then they'll listen to me just out of courtesy yep. because they need me to play their records. Mm -hmm. So I, my goal was never to become a DJ. I always wanted to be a guy behind the scenes because I was a producer in my bedroom, mm -hmm. right? So that's what I was, my goal was to do. And I wanted to build businesses and brands and be the guy behind the strategizing and architecting of those brands. But when I knew that nobody would listen to me, I'm just a white kid from Boston like, who just understood culture and hip hop. No one's gonna listen to me because I haven't had any success yet. So when I asked that guy, I go, how do you be a DJ on radio? You know, like most cities, they'll, they'll hate on you so you can't yeah. come and try to take their job. So I just did research and I found out this big company that did syndicated radio shows. So I drove to their office and I sat there and waited for the person who was in charge of picking DJs, and I sat and waited for five hours in the lobby, mm. right? And then it was the end of the day, and he was getting ready to leave. And as he's walking out, you could see out of the corner of his eye, he realized, ah, oh, this fucking kid is still here. So uh, he walks over, and he goes, hey, man, why don't you just leave your, your CD, and I'll check it out. And I was like, no, man, I just waited five hours. Why don't you give me five minutes so we can change your life? Mm -hmm. And and he was like, whoa, this kid's pretty cocky, right? Yeah. And I was like, look at it this way. You could spare five minutes of your life. You either get me out of your hair and I never bother you again, or you found a champion without even looking. Mm. 
Mm. Right. So we went into his office. He put the CD in. And you know, you know my mixtapes. Yeah. Like right from the beginning, it's it's, it's active. Like you ain't got to wait for hot shit to happen. So um, that's how my mixes were. And he listened to it. And you know when like, you know when you're behind somebody, but you can see their cheek come out because yeah. they're smiling because yeah. this yeah. is dope. For sure. I seen this. So I said, got him. Right. So then, like, then he like got rid of the face and looked around. And said, Yo, you did all this. So I was like, yeah, if you skip a couple, you can see some remixes I did. And then he did that. And it literally went from, by the way, I was calling for a year to try to get a meeting. Mm. It went from them saying no, no, no to, all right, man, we'll get back to you. That day, the owner mm. of the whole network, um, uh, Gary Bedian, I forget his first name, but he owned um, Super Radio. Yeah. You remember Super Radio? Mm -hmm. So they called me that day. It was like, hey, can you start next week? Mm. And by the way, we don't even pay DJs, uh, but we want to pay you. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I changed the game for that yeah. whole platform. Um, so anyways, for you to just ask me a question about that, you'd have to like understand what I've done and who I am to even get to the point of what the story I could tell you. Um, so there's a million stories. I've interviewed everybody from Samuel Jackson to Curtis Jackson to Janet Jackson, right? I want to ask you a question. Yep. Because I want to... I, I guess your question want, doesn't I want, matter. I want, Ray's got a question. I want to focus... I want to focus on something because this show is for people that have a dream, right? The show, that's why it's called The God Show, which is an acronym for Goats and Underdogs. So my thought process was the goats and the underdogs have the same mentality. You actually keep the underdog mentality to become a goat, right? right. And I say all that to say that the one thing about you that I've always known, you always felt bigger than what you were in the room to do. And I want to know, where did that come from? Because I want to stay where you are, but I but yep. I think it's remiss for to ask that question and not know who you are, right? Right. I, I agree. Like to to know the, f it's cool to hear fascinating things yeah. that somebody did, but it's like how like like, like you, you oh, get like, like, like bro, you was a producer, but you always even DJ producer, no matter what you did, it just always felt like this not his first, this not gonna be his last stop. Well, you know what I mean? Well, you know, there's a difference between being conceited or confident. Yeah. Right, so when you get on the court as a basketball player and you're as fly as Kobe or, or Michael Jordan, it's because you know you put the work in mm -hmm. to be there. Yeah. And you know you outworked everybody else. And you know you have the answers and you know how to win this game. It's not I think I know. And that's the problem with most people is like, they think they know the right thing to do. And they haven't really put in the work to really be, uh, to study the game, to understand why it'll work, to understand why it didn't work before, what it is about you that can make it work, that yeah. someone else couldn't make it work. So it's really just understanding and studying, you know, the best, but also how I made it is I studied, most people study the best to emulate what they did. I, yes. want, to, I want to be sure. like Mike, yep, right? Sure. I want to be like this person. I watched the best to see what they were doing wrong mm -hmm. or what they were leaving on the table or what they weren't understanding. Sure. So I'd say, that's the lane I'm going to own. Sure. Right? So like, let's take Funk Flex, for instance. So Funk Flex was the top DJ. Every DJ wants to be Flex. They want to be in his position to the point everyone's even dropping bombs like him, right? Yeah. So when I got on radio, I was like, all right, what is he not doing that I can conquer? Because he's already conquering, you know, breaking the records, interviewing the biggest artists in the world, doing all this stuff. Bro, what? what you just really just open my mind to something. That's what I'm here for. Open That's your mind, dope. Ray Daniels. Because you know, because what, what you're really saying is, is see, most people emulate, but what you did was you obviously knew what was great about him, and you figured out how could you do your version of that. Well, not my version of, of that. You reverse engineering success. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, it felt like that. To yeah, me. it's reverse engineering success. Yeah. It's like, all right, if he did this to get there. What did he miss on the path? Exactly. Or while he's there, what is he not doing with that success that I can come in and own that space? So when I got on radio, look, I'm from the streets. Like, mm -hmm. I know hip-hop. I know what's going on. I know what's up, right? Yeah, but, sure. but I put on this persona as, like, this innocent white kid that didn't know better, mm -hmm. right? So I would interview people, and I would ask questions that I know a black dude couldn't ask because it would probably be a problem if you asked a rapper that question. It would yes. be a beef. But if I say to Jay-Z, like... What do you do when you're on the road, like by yourself in hotel rooms? Do you like watch adult feature films? Like as a, as a white kid asking that question, Jay-Z like, what you mean? It wasn't awkward. It was yeah, like, yeah. You, don't, you don't have to know better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's like, what you mean? What you mean? What, what, what? And I was like, I don't, do you like watch adult feature films? He's like, man, what you going to do with that? And I was like, I don't get familiar with yourself. What else would you do? <laughs> right? Like, but like, like Flex couldn't ask that question. Yes. You know what I mean? Like everybody on the hip hop radio had to be, would act like they're, 
as cool or cooler than the artist that they're interviewing. I didn't mind acting like I wasn't cool because mm. I am fucking cool. Yeah. So I don't have to prove it or try to one you up to be cool. I'm here in this room even right now because I'm fucking cool at what I do. Yeah. And I know that. I don't have to yes. get to proving it to you. Yeah. And I'm not trying to like be famous. I'm trying to be great. And most people are trying to be famous because they think famous equals success. Mm. But what they don't realize is famous doesn't equal great, but great can make you famous, right? But if you chase great, then the fame will be a byproduct yep. of your greatness. Yep. Ray knows me yep. because of the great work that I did, yep. right? He knew my name before he knew me because my work, my reputation for my work superseded whatever fame or celebrity or reputation I had, right? So I was always focused on being the dopest. So when you focus on being dope and you really study it and you really put the work and not think you're dope, we all know people that think they're, Ray, how many rappers have you heard, yo, if you just fuck with me, we're gonna make a billion. Every, Fucking no it. one makes a billion yeah. dollars, so you're already an idiot. But not only because that, you're not you, even saying the if, right shit. If not only that, if you are that good, then you don't need me. Facts. Like, yeah, what does Ray have that's going to get you to that billion? And that's my point. It's right? like, so it's almost like you think that I have a secret and I know it's no secret. The secret is working constantly. And obviously there are some nuances that you can make uh, changes to, but I still know, I still hate when people say that, by the way. I think there is one secret. It, it's, been a, it's been an ongoing running thing for our, like, in general, with all, with all our guests. You have to have a lot of nerve to be successful. Like, like for you <laughs> to sit in the office and wait five hours and say, look, you, you waited all day to meet me. I didn't wait to meet you. You waited to meet me because I know I could change your life. Well, I'll, I'll give you an example to, to now and then we'll go backwards. But like, this isn't announced yet. So I don't know when, when this goes live. We won't drop it until you tell us based on what you're you, saying. All right, whatever. All right. Edit. <laughs> all right, ready? <laughs> yes. So one of the things is I just did a partnership with Entrepreneur Magazine. Uh, and they reached out to me because they were looking for voices that could represent the new young entrepreneurs that are in, in you know, real life experience, connected to culture, mm -hmm. doesn't speak so academically that like it's hard to even understand some of the words you're writing, right? Mm -hmm. So they're like, the way that you speak to entrepreneurs is like, you say so much profound stuff in a simplistic way. That's what we're looking for. So I just did a partnership with Entrepreneur Magazine where not only am I a writer for Entrepreneur, but now they're sponsoring my new podcast and I'll speak like at Entrepreneur events. So like, Having that ability to have people like that call you to your point of like, nah, nah, you should like want to be down with me. Even when they said, what do, we, what do we need to do for you to do this? I knew they were talking money, but I was like, you know what I need you to do is I don't want to be out here looking like I'm super gassed that I did a deal with Entrepreneur. Y'all need to look super gassed. You did a deal with Clinton Sparks. Yes. And they were like, done. Yeah. So like, and that's how we got a press release and all yeah. the socials and articles and all that stuff because- it took a long time, by the way. Like, I'm, it depends with how you grow up, right? Yep. I grew up like feeling unloved, unworthy. Like, sure. dad left. You know, all the shit. We that talked we about this when we right. did your show. I know that. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you don't feel or recognize that you're as dope as you might be, mm -hmm. right? So, like, when you have the ability to understand what dope is and build dope, you assume everybody else has that ability too. Mm -hmm. You don't realize. You're Superman. That's, that's, your, that's your unique superpower. Yeah, you yeah. don't understand that. That this, Oh, I can fly and everyone else can't fly too? Mm -hmm. I thought we all could fly, mm -hmm. right? So like, it took a long time to come to that because I never felt that I mattered. Dude, as many platinum Value. records, as, many success, as much success as I had, I always still feel like I'm this like kid from Boston that's just trying to get you familiar with me and make you understand that I'm worthy to talk to. So with like, the confidence was really just almost like, I didn't get mad if you didn't recognize I wasn't great. I actually felt empathetic that you don't understand what great is. Yes. Mm. Right? For sure. So it's like, yo, you got somebody great right here, and you're on your fucking Motorola two-way pager yeah. typing something. Well, I'm trying to tell you something that could change your life. Exactly. And you know how many people in the music industry that we know sure. that has launched since nobody's in the music industry now, now calling me, mm -hmm. right? And I'll tell them. I'm like, look, man, I got love for you, bro, but let me tell you, how you treated me when we were young. And it mm. doesn't affect me in the sense sure. of like, I ain't fucking with you now. Cause my goal, I'm not about cancel culture. Mm. I'm about council culture. Yes. Right. If somebody does something wrong, then let me tell you how you can do it better and not make that mistake again. Sure. I'm not going to call the names out, but there's people, me and you both nah, know for sure. that I've had long talks. They're like, really? I was like that. I was like, man, you, you don't know that you were an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> like you were a super dick. You know, what's so crazy. I don't do that. 
it's weird because as, as I'm looking at you, I always looked at you and myself like I feel like like we're on different coasts doing kind of the same work in different cities. And you're right. But I never did that because I'm a Virgo. And it feels same. like you, you're Virgo too. Yeah. See, as soon as you was talking, I, no, you, as soon as you talk, I was like, he sounded like a Virgo. But <laughs> my thing is, I don't want you to change now. Yeah. Like, I don't want you to change because I'm going to call you out and then you're going to change and then I'm not going to think it's authentic. I'm going to think you only change this because I called you out. So it's people who I know shitted on me all the way up and it's like, and I see them and I'm just like, what's the point of mentioning? What's the point of saying something to you for? So I can give you a heads up so you can check that you are a piece of shit. That's why I passed you. Yeah, but see, I think differently than that because people are raised differently in yeah. different surroundings, different parents, and they became a piece of shit. Maybe because all they know how to be is a piece of shit because they never had nobody that was shit telling them how not to be shit. So if I can be the one that opens up your you eyes. Though. I'm going to challenge you, I'm though. A lot of no, I'm, but I'm going to challenge you, though. I'm going to challenge you, though, because we had very similar. I wanted love. You wanted love. You could have took that and did fucked up shit. Could have. But you didn't. Right. So my thing is, is that, like, some people, like, like I want to see everybody win. And I know that about you. That's mm -hmm. what I love about you. You, you. This is who you are on camera, off camera. This is who I am, period. So right. I know that. But some people don't deserve the win. And they don't deserve the win because their hearts are fucked up. And I don't think that people like us can change their hearts. I think they have to want to change their heart. Like, by the way, I was that person until I met someone who called me out on everything I did in a way that I, was, I wasn't used to. They was like, why are you doing that? You know why you're doing that? Because you think that that's right. And I'm like, yeah, it's not. No, it's not right. And here's why it's not right. And it was like, damn. So but imagine, I, I, I faced it and I, I changed, think, well, though. Yeah, imagine if that person didn't give you that advice because fuck you, you're a piece of shit. You'd still be a piece of but shit. You know True, but here's the thing, like though. But here's the thing, though. You're, you're 100% right. But, but the person that gave it to me, he gave it to me for years because the first time he tried to give it to me, I didn't act like a piece of shit. I didn't know I was a piece of shit. Right. You see well, what I'm trying I mean, to say? Most people don't. But right, I think, that, that, okay. advice, that, uh, that advice allowed you to learn who you were as a person. Right. And I think the running thing for success is it, like everybody who sat down on this couch knows who they are as a person. So when you start, when you actually understand who you are. But okay, no so, longer, so, so, no let, so let's say if that's the truth then. Let's say if that's the truth I, then. I don't agree. I think most people are not self-aware. That's what I was about to say. I, I, was, I was about to disagree with you. I don't think they know who they are. That's why I, if they acted that way, like they you, think they know who they are. Yes. So that's why it's like, so at that moment, either I'm going to give you your real and you're going to change like dog, you know how many people I've been in my life that I've tried to tell them something and they fought me about it at that moment. What you going to do? Keep telling, tell them, Oh shit. You know, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, we'll see what you end well, up in, in most of, in most of my businesses, I spent more time telling upper management the right thing to do than I spent on doing the right thing we should be doing mm. Mm. because they don't get it, man. Like, Man, most people are not self-aware. Most people think they're doper than they are, smarter than they are, flyer than they are, more successful than they are. People start believing their own lies. Like social media, you start posting shit up there, you start believing you actually that fly. Mm -hmm. And like most people don't recognize that. Like, dude, you developed a, an own lie that you're living now. What the fuck about you is real? Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, and then, but most people don't even want to take the time to go backwards to see they don't want to change. their deficiencies. They don't, want, they don't want to them. see their deficiencies. Exactly. Why do I keep treating girls wrong? Why am I not as successful as I want to be? Why do these things keep happening to me? It's, it's the world. It's never you, right? Mm, and like, accountability. And that's what most people do. It's like, ah, oh, it's because she's fucked up. Or, ah, oh, because this dude tried to fucking scam me. It's like, dude, it's kind of maybe you, man. Like, all the same. You ever meet people like, fucking drama and negativity just chases them yes. for some reason. It's like, they don't know it's them though. How come your car always breaks down? How come you ain't them. never got money for rent? How come yeah. you the one? Uh, it's like, man, maybe this is you. Maybe you got to get your shit together. But that's a whole, we could have a whole nother show By the way, I, but just I, on the I, I psychology want, I want, I want of being dope. But I want to drill on that. I yeah. wanted to stop and drill on that because there are people watching this that still feel like the reason why I'm not the way I need to be is because the world is fucked up. The world is not, it's not plotting against you. You just are around the wrong people doing the wrong shit and the world is giving you what you're giving it. And to me, that's the hard part. That's why I wanted to stop there because it, it, it feels easy. Like all I did was stay at a radio station, but your intent wasn't to hurt that guy. Your intent really was, I'll die for this, bro. That's why I'm worth invested in. Your intent wasn't on some arrogant young kid trying to tell his man, you should fuck with me because I know it all. It was, you should fuck with me because I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that we win. And you did. We is the key term. We win, exactly, we win. for sure. And that's what most people aren't focused on. Most people on. focus like, on, I how do win. I win? Yeah. What do I get from you? What do I get out yeah. of this? What do I, I've never ever proposed an opportunity to anybody 
that they don't win as equally as much as I will or period, more period. when I present something to them. And like, look, the world is, life is easy. People make it hard. I say that all the and, time. And, like, and that's, how, that's how I look at, and like, you know, you look online now, there's all these fucking fake inspiration and gurus about life and people, everybody's got to put a fucking quote up now mm-hmm. about how you should live your life. And it's like, they ain't even fucking living their life For that sure. way. And like, who, you got to pay attention to the messenger, not the message, right? <laughs> because the messenger could be a piece of shit that's just reciting or regurgitating something you heard from somebody else. Yep. And like most people get scammed or beat in life, whether it's a, a girl believing in this shithead dude or it's someone buying something online, a course, whatever it is, because, oh man, they look like they're yeah. what they say they are. But you getting scammed isn't their fault. Mm-mm. It's your fault for not doing the right research or the due diligence to make sure that this person's real and it's not a lie. Whether you're buying something, hanging with something, getting in a relationship with something, it's, everything is your fault. And if you think you're so dope at life and you have boss mentality or you're a leader, right? Then if you're such a fucking great leader, then you need to assume responsibility and accountability when shit goes fucking wrong. Because if agree. it goes wrong and you're the leader, guess what? Guess boss. who gets to fix it? Yep. You, because yep. you're in charge. I just was doing, I literally was just in a- We're like, kind of the same guy, right? That's what I'm about to say. I was just in therapy. <laughs> you just- I was just looking. in therapy. Nah, we, we good. Let's roll. We rocking out. And we both lost a lot of weight, by the way. He lost a lot of weight. But my thing, I was, I was just talking to my therapist, and I was telling her like all the things that I feel like needs to change around me. And she was like, well, let's look at who's to blame. And then I started, and the minute I said, but, and I was like, stop. It's me. It's all on me. It's on me because I'll sit back and allow you to do what you got to do. And it's me. It's my fault we're losing. I'll never blame nobody in this room while we're losing. It's going to always be on me. And for me, and, and, and I think one of the keys to being successful and winning is when things are going wrong, the first place you should go look is in the mirror. But most people look around them, point, no, 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 go look in the mirror. What the fuck did you do? And if you're not getting better, and another thing is that if you're great, it doesn't matter where you end up. You're going to end up with some great shit. Mm-hmm. That's what I do believe. If you're committed to greatness and a lot of, like even with this show, like I started this, I reverse engineered it. I, I, I wanted to make the show great before I could figure out how to make money from the show. Mm-hmm. But as the show started getting great, now everybody's like, where's the money mm-hmm. on the team? Where's the money? Where's the money? It's money. And I'm like, no, yeah. no, no. With, the reason why we're winning is because we're great. Yeah. Let's reverse engineer. I mean, people yeah. start podcasting, thinking about the business. Yep. It don't work. And then they got money and then they, and they burnt their name. So for me, I'm always like, if you're good, you have nothing to worry about. Right. And if you're focused on being good, you have nothing to worry about. Right. Most people lose because they're focused on how everyone else around them was bad. Yeah. But were you good, though? Because Michael Jordan was great, and then they realized, we got to surround this guy with some different energy. And they did, and they won. Yeah, it's, it's, if you're always focused on the fix or the resolution, no matter what, then in my book, one of my chapters is called Mastering Art. Art is automatic, resourceful thinking. Yep. Right? What's the when, name of your book? Uh, how to Win Big in the Music Business. It's free. Yeah. You get it totally free. It's not like you got to sign up to get this other thing. It's completely free. Download PDF right away. Sign up. That's it. Um, and I got a, a full course, 65 video course that's also free. Mm. And I'll tell you why it's free after. But yeah, I want to know. I'm definitely um, getting into that. The reason why, you know, mastering art is really important is because when something goes wrong, most people like complain, get pissed off, angry, blame people, dwell in like the problems that are now going to arise from this thing not going the way that you wanted it to go. But if you automatically train your brain, it's doable. Everything that I talk about, this isn't lip service. Like I've mm-hmm. literally thought of this. This is you, by the way, 24-7. I've never seen you yeah. not be this guy that you no, are. Like, and I, and I, I practice it and, and master it, which is why I have the confidence that you guys asked about. It's because I know it works. Because I've done, I win, repeat, win, repeat, win, repeat. Over it, that's my life. I don't, I've never lost, mm-hmm. right? And, and, you know, it was some, I was about to say win, <clears throat> learn, repeat. Yeah, well, that's in the wind. Yeah, right? exactly. So, but if you master art and automatically automatic resourceful thinking, this the way my mind operates. All right, this didn't happen right. This didn't go the way we expected. The second I, that happens, I'm like, who can help me fix this? Who do I know that as this? What are my resources? How do I do? That's if your mind immediately goes that, you don't even got time to think about Absolutely. the problem or what. Or staying you're, in you're negativity, about the fix. you can't. You got to always go to the fix. Yeah, always. and it's like I made a post today, uh, where it's like, stop, make, stop putting on this facade or subscribing to this concept of make it till you fake it, just focus on the making it. Yeah. Right. And stop wasting the time on the faking it. Cause it's distracting you from making it. Yeah. Right? And I'll, outside of that, I'll also say, what did you give? Like you want to get, you want to get repaid for something that you put in, but you got to really ask yourself, 
what did you put in? Because to me, putting in means changing. Putting in doesn't mean coming in and being yourself. Like, that's the whole point of the team. When a team comes in, when you become, become a part of a team, Dennis Rodman's role was different with the Bulls than it was with the Pistons. It was different with the Spurs. Mm -hmm. It's different. So for me, it's like when you come in, you got to ask yourself, what can I do for the team? Like, what? how can I change to be better? Well, you, well, yeah. well, that's another thing, too. Everybody wants to be Pharrell. Nobody wants to be Chad Hugo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. nobody wants to be the guy behind the scenes. That's equally as important and in order to be a great number one, you also have to learn how to be a great number two, three, four, five, six. Because if you don't understand how to do that, you'll never be a fantastic number one. Because you don't understand the mentality, the problems, the insecurities, the objectives, like the vulnerabilities. You don't fucking get it. So as much as you think you're a boss, until you're a fucking killer employee, you don't know how to be a fucking killer boss. Right. And everybody from day one... Because a killer employee is a killer boss, by yeah, the way. You're exactly. the CEO of yourself. You benefit from right. what you do. Right, right. So, so you are the CEO of you. Everybody yeah. wants to be the leader, man, because they think it's like inferior or not as like killer to be like the follower because they look at followers like, man, I ain't, down, I ain't listening to this. Why? Listen. You don't want to listen to somebody who knows what they're talking about? You don't want to level up? You don't want to show great communication? You don't want to show teamwork? You just want to be the boss and make the fucking calls, which is probably going to be wrong because you don't have any experience to understand the right calls to make. Don't be a dick, man. Like, fucking humble yourself. So I want to ask you a question. How do you go with choosing teammates for your, your team? Like, what do you look for when you're looking for somebody? Commitment, work ethic, honesty, trustworthiness, and a good heart. Mm. It starts with good heart. Mm -hmm. You could be the dopest at your job. Everybody I've ever interviewed, even artists I work with, and you go, sure. I sit with them for two hours before I even fucking listen to shit. Well, I've been talking about right? music. Because like, yeah. I want to know who you are, exactly. what you're about. Like, can I trust you? Mm. Are you sustainable? Yeah. Like, are you going to stab me in the back? Mm -hmm. Are you going to like, are you going to commit to what we're going to do together? Because I'm about to put my time into this shit, man. Are you going to do it too? Yeah. I might have to carry your ass. So yeah. like, when I sit around and talk to someone, it's, if they're a good human is, is criteria one. Yes. Because if you're in the room with me, then you're already killer. Yep. at your job because sure. you wouldn't be in this room with me. Sure. So now I need to know if that same killerness is who you are caring about the world and other people and you actually have a genuine heart. Mm. My whole company, my new company I'm about to launch, which I can't talk about yeah, yet. Yeah, for sure. But like, <laughs> it's going to be a global cultural disruptor. Yeah. My fucking C-suite is all killers. Yeah. Like the best of the best. Like when you finally find, you be like, this motherfucker got yeah. all these people, right? And, and everybody in it, not only are they like a monster at the one job they do and had immense success, billion dollar companies, like all this stuff, but they all are beautiful human beings. Yes. That care about change and helping the world and connecting cultures and international bridges and uplifting you know underserved communities like that's what matters to me everything that i've ever done my whole career every business i've been if it doesn't help other people i don't care for sure i don't care how much money it makes for sure if it's not going to help like because i'm from the streets right yeah. so i know like what what's needed yeah right? and, and, and the know, weight of what was happening and i know what's yeah. not available yeah so if i can make change that helps you know, strengthens people's intelligence mm -hmm. or opens up opportunities or even just inspires them to see that they can be more than they can be and stop feeling bad for yourself or thinking that these oh, things sorry. are not available mm -hmm. when they are. You just yeah. have to, dude, when I You're was- You're not attracting it. When, Who you are is not attracting everything right. you want. Well, when you sit there feeling bad for yourself or yep. you sit there complaining or you blame other people, that's all you're ever going to be. And no one wants to fucking hang around that guy, right? No, no girl wants to be with a man like that. Am I right? Like coming home, complaining all the time. Well, yeah, man, I'm a fucking boss. Or, yo, da, da, da. It's like, man, man I need to find me a new dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, like I would, who wants to be around negativity or complaining or like all that vibe all the time? And I'm not saying, hey, go be cheery all the time because, you know, life gets tough sometimes. And there are times where you have to not be as happy. But, you know, I'm a big component of defending happy, right? Mm. And, you know, everyone's always chasing happy or chasing the things they think will make them happy. But they've never had that, so they don't really know if it'll make them happy. They just assume if I get this car, if I get this girl, if I get this job, if I have this money, I'm going to now be in Happyville, right? And it's like, you don't know that because you've never had it. It could bring more misery. As we all know, it could be more money, more problems, right? So, and it, in fact, is, right? So most people think that they're chasing the happiness that's going to make them happy. What most people don't do is when they do finally get to it. And by the way, most people are never happy. They're never most. satisfied. I need more money. More. I need more chicks. Yep. I need more cars. Yep. I need more. 
when you when you when you set out a plan for your life of what you believe will make you happy, mm-hmm. you have to really make a plan. And then you have to have realistic milestones that you can achieve. And then what's most important, you got to keep score of your life. If you don't keep score, you don't know if you're winning or if you're losing, mm. right? And then when you get to that place that you said, this will make me happy, then you have to understand what content means. Then you have to understand how to defend that happy. Mm-hmm. What defending that happy means is who not to let in there, yep. what not to let bother you. These type of people can't be around. I mean, we all see people online like, I ain't fucking with bum bitches no more. I ain't doing it. Sure. Sure you're not. <laughs> you don't even really understand the definition of these people that you people, think shouldn't be in your life. Bro, people, that is, people are so delusional when it comes to that. Mm-hmm. I, as you're talking, all I'm thinking about is my girlfriend when I want, said I wanted to be in the music business. And me saying I want to be something, it got on her nerves. Mm-hmm. Like you could tell she got tired of me talking about it. It was like one day I'm like a civilian, the next day I'm like, all I want to talk about is music, what we're going to yeah. do. And I remember one time she was like, I just hope somebody give you a million dollars so you'll shut up. My God. And I remember I was like, I got to get away from her. Yep. I got away from her and look where I go. And look, she's in the same place I left her. Right. Same place. So pe- some people, and that's the part I had to learn. Some people are okay where they are and you got to leave them there. Right. And just that, I mean, it might not be meant for you, but you right. got to leave them where they are because they're okay with be, they're okay with fucking up. They're okay with having a bad attitude. They're okay with, and they're okay with that because they feel like, well, look at that person. They're doing this. So and it's like, well, well those, then, those people are I the people that can't fathom themselves being the success that they see on TV or they hear from something else. So they just live in this like self deprecating so that I want to bring you down. Well, I mean, this is, this is hood mentality. You, you know, this is, no. Yeah, I mean, this is hood mentality. I mean, people don't think, man, why do you think you're better than us? Like, why do you think you can make it? Because they can't believe they can make it, so they don't think you can either. And if you start to, they get mad at it. I was about right? to say, or some people are smart. Like, a friend of mine, his wife wrote one day on Instagram. She said, I followed his vision because mine wasn't clear. Mm. And she got behind his vision and yeah. whatever he wants. And that's okay, and by that's the fire, way. fire, yeah. Because they, they all win. Right. But the problem is, is that people, people it's hard for people to accept that right now, this person is the one. And I think the reason why it works for me and you is because our job was to always put someone else on the stage. Mm-hmm. So by the time you get on the stage, you just, you, you ready because you already know what you need everybody else mm-hmm. to get on the stage for. Well, I showed you how to do it. Exactly. So of course I know what to exactly. do. Exactly, but it's like, but you're also okay with saying you're the one. And I remember, um, I remember Tango, Neo's manager, he told me this shit about six, 15 years ago. And he said, Jay-Z wins because Everybody around him knows he's the one. Yep. Tata, OG, Juan, Dez, they all know he the one. And they're like, he's the one that's, th- that's here to take us all right. to the next level. So they all kind of follow and, behind and by him. The, and by the way, their position is also killer at what they do. Exactly. But they think they need to be number one in order to be recognized as the killer. But we all know Tata's killer. We all Jay know Lenny S killer. is killer. killer. We all know the whole team is killer. Yeah. And without that team, Jay-Z wouldn't be as killer as he is. Exactly. So everybody needs my, but, other killers. But, but the team has to understand who we're here to play for. And I think that Jay-Z, if you pay attention to all the companies that's ran by black people that are working the celebrity is usually at the forefront of it. That's kind of why I got from behind the camera because it's like, it's hard to build a company when there's not a face to the brand because you are the face to your brand. You are the brand. And I felt like, you know, trying to build it. Like, so I managed Teron. Like, Teron is the biggest poly songwriter in the world right now. He's, mm-hmm. he's incredible. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't want to be that. He doesn't yeah. want to be that. And I had to, for years, I was trying to make him and he doesn't. And then, but he's okay with me being that. He's yeah. like, he just called me from Korea. Like, Ray, they talk about your show out here, blah, blah, blah. He's a career right now. But that's because he he knew that when it was his turn to be the one, I was right there behind him. Like, let's go. Well, the beautiful part about that, too, is that there's no insecurity or jealousy, right? And typically, if the manager, is, like you, is out here the face, that person's like, man, you out here worried about you instead of getting me more opportunities. Exactly. But that's also an understanding of the positions. Yeah. And people don't know. When I was coming up, and I would go sign artists to like my independent label <laughs> and I'm pressing records for people. I'm getting studio and I'm trying to be the executive behind the scene. Then I start kind of being popular as a DJ. I'm on MTV. Like the source does an article on me. Like all the artists that I'm working with are like, man, you out here just trying to like worry about you. You're the one in the source. Why aren't we in there? I was like, cause you ain't at the level yet that they want to talk to you. I go, but if you realize the power in me will help uplift you to then have the power too. So back to the, he's the one. If you just put all the energy in this one thing, it's going to now I can reach up and pull all you guys up 
with me. Yeah. But nobody would ever understand that. And I, I remember just that. like your girlfriend, my girlfriend back then was like, why don't you just, every time you do Clinton Spark stuff, it works. Yeah. Every time you do something for someone else, there's yeah. always a problem. Yeah. Why don't you just focus on Clinton Sparks? Yeah. And that was the day, this was like 1999. That was the day I was like, all right, I'm going to build the company called Clinton Sparks. Now, everybody is a, a personal crazy. brand. Everybody's the CEO of them now, right? Now, but, but back then, I was that wasn't doing different. this 20-something years ago. Everybody in the music business for 10 years laughed at me when I'd say I'm a brand. Like, what do you mean you're a brand? You're a DJ. What are you talking about a brand? Mm -hmm. I was like, nah, I'm the CEO of the company called Clinton Sparks. And the yeah. good thing about that now, and this is a lot of things, everyone's the CEO of themselves now, but what people don't do, what I've been doing since 2000, is I removed my emotions as the executive of this company. Therefore, if someone didn't like what this company was doing, I wasn't mad or upset. And if someone loved it, I didn't get an ego. Mm -hmm. I looked at it from the perspective of an executive that's looking at the marketplace on how I can better serve the customer Absolutely. with this business. So if someone's like, yo, you're dope, you're dope. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm doing business right. Yes. I wasn't like, see, everyone loves me. Yeah. And, if, and if someone was like, man, that shit sucks. I'm reaching out like, I'm sorry you didn't like this. Maybe the next thing I do, you'll enjoy, but thanks for listening. Yeah. Like you would do in customer service. So I was a CEO. I was customer service. I was general manager. I was the artist. I was everything. And the reason why when you become so fluent in doing everything, when you do one thing, one, and you'll understand this, one, you're fucking doping at everybody else that does that one thing because you have so much more talent to add to it. But also, um, I lost my train of thought when you picked up your phone. I have a question, uh, I have a question for you. Yeah, go ahead. How do you find a healthy work-life balance? Because I see you are married. Yeah. Like, how do you have a healthy work-life balance with all the success and things that you have going on? Well, because part of my business is my family, right? So the, my business is my whole life. It's not just the business over here or how I'm going to get money. I treat my wife and my kids and my family just as important as my businesses are. And most people don't. They're like, man, I'm sorry I couldn't see you for two weeks, but I'm out here trying to get this money. Well, if you want to build that business too, you have to put just as much time and energy and effort into that too, or she's going to bounce and find somebody that will, yep. right? So, so I know this when I get into this, I'm not selfish about it. And also the, my wife who I'm with knows what I'm doing and supports it and understands it. So I don't have selfish um, decisions on my own. Like I'm going to do this by any means necessary. If it runs you over or abandons you, oh, well, I got to get this. Because what's the point of getting that when I don't have that? to celebrate it with, right? Or talk to about about mm -hmm. it with. Sure. Right? It's like, I'm just a lonely, lonely guy up here that can say, look how awesome I am. And now, now guess what I'm doing? Worrying about if anybody wants to get with me now because I am fucking awesome and rich. Mm -hmm. And now like, of course you're going to be with me now because of that. Of course. You know what I'm saying? I so agree. like, when, you, when you're, you got to just, there's a, it, everyone's like, what talks about this balance. I don't even look at it as like it's a problem or a concern or something to worry about when it's just, innately how you think and just as important as everything else it's not it's not hard to fit it in or make it work mm -hmm. right yeah no you're right I, I i'm just you say you i couldn't say it any better honestly like you 100 percent right and the the how do you find people like you like it it's almost like it feels like it's like like what were the missing pieces to what you were doing that you was like i because you are the engine but it's hard to be the engine the gas, the driver, the designer of the car, and you all those things. So how do you how do you find people like you to help that or figure out what you're missing? That's what I'm saying is that how did you scale Clinton Sparks up? What was the thought process in which Clinton Sparks needed to scale up as a as a Well as those a are company? two different questions. So the first question is yeah. I don't try to find another me because there is not another me. Yeah. I try to find people that are not me that can do great things that me can't do as great as them. Exactly. Right? So then I find... How do you them. recognize those things are needed for your side? Well, the first thing, it goes back to self-awareness. Yeah. I recognize my own deficiencies. Mm. So I'm not a very organized person. Yeah, me neither. So I need to find somebody that's extremely organized, that can build systems that I can kind of understand, but they run it. Yeah. And then I have to make, find someone that I can trust to run that, that mm -hmm. situation. So that's just like one example. Like, yeah. I know what my... If I'm Superman and I can fly and I got laser beams and... Guess what I can't do? I'm not Aquaman. I can't hold my breath and talk to fish. Yeah. So I got to go find Aquaman. I'm not yeah. Wonder Woman with a lasso and an invisible jet. I got to go find Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. And then when I find them, now I just created the Justice League. Of course. Right? And I'm still Superman. Bringing them in didn't make me not sue. When, in our business, you know what happens? When people think they're dope, they're so afraid to put a spotlight on somebody else's dopeness 
because they think it's going to dim their light and their dopeness. And, and I've always believed I'm so dope that if I show that other people are dope, one, I'm not threatened. And two, it makes me even doper because it shows I know what dope is and I'm hipping you to other dope. Yep. Right. But people are so nervous that that dopeness is going to like outshine their dopeness. But I'm not afraid of my dopeness being outshined. Either. And not only that, if mm. my dopeness is outside, outshine, I want to work with you. 100%. I want to learn how to I be want doper. more dope. I want to be doper. My, my motto is find dope people, make them your friends, do dope shit together. Absolutely. Absolutely. Love mm. that. Okay. So, you could, so we named you the king of pivoting today, right? So how do you know when it's time to kind of pivot in whatever direction you're going to go next? You pay attention to the market. Uh, you pay attention to the people around you. Uh, when you... So I might have an advantage because the way that I grew up, I was exposed to everything very early in my life. So a lot of times people aren't, don't know the right decision because they didn't have the exposure that, say, somebody like me did, right? <clears throat> so when I was young, like, I'm a white kid. I was half, half of my childhood was, you know, Irish Catholic and yeah. then the other Catholic. Like, I, was always, I was always, like, too white for the black kids and too black for the white kids. Yeah. Like, I was, like, stuck in the middle. Yeah where it was like, I was a kid listening to X-Clan and Public Enemy thinking like, should I be wearing an African medallion? Is that okay? <laughs> like, you, know, you know what I mean? Like, I didn't know. Like, all the white kids would jump me because I looked too hip hop. Yeah, like, yeah. Then like to the black kids, they're like, oh, you're just a white dude. Yeah. That stuff. So <clears throat> I was like lost and stuck in this way. My mother's, my mother's jobs, like, all her friends were black. So my whole house was full of like black culture yeah. in my neighborhood. Yeah. And then she would have like lesbians and gay dudes staying at our house. So like I understood like homosexuality early. And even one dude was a cross dresser. So like all of these worlds were exposed to me like before I was even 10. Yeah. So it was all normal. Yeah. It wasn't like I don't understand it or I'm confused by it. I just felt like this is the world mm -hmm. and this is what I'm a part of. So to understand how I think is to understand how I grew up, right? Yeah. And then I was bullied. I was sexually abused for four years in my home by a man that my mom had me there. Mm -hmm. My dad was an alcoholic, watched him almost kill my mother. So like, you know, all the things that you can see that someone yeah. you know, overcomes you, these yeah. traumas, right? I never looked at them as like, woe is me, or like, look what I went through. I looked at them as like, these gave me a, a special set of skills that can think differently than someone that hasn't been exposed to these things. So when mm -hmm. I understand how to pivot, it's because I take everyone into consideration. Most people just think about themselves or what's good for them. When I'm working on something, I'm worrying about everybody because I understand everybody and the psychology of everybody from the street to Wall Street. Yeah. And I know how they all think, how they operate, and most importantly, what they need to feel, right? So you're never selling a product or a service. You're only selling a feeling. And if you understand what people need to feel, you can sell anything to anybody. The problem with that is most people that have that skill end up on American Greed. <laughs> now, if, if you take that same skill and apply it to bet the betterment of the world, then you're creating businesses and brands that tap into culture and connect people. Like, I'll never need a company that's like, oh, let's make sure we get the head of diversity, DE and I in our company. Like, it's in my fucking DNA. The whole company is that. Yeah. I don't need a department or the head of DE and I in my company. And if you do, you should fucking second guess the whole meaning of your company Absolutely. if you need someone to come in and tell you how to think and how to treat and consider other people that don't look like you. You know what's so crazy? I'm smiling because. Jimmy Iovine has a famous saying, and he says, if you want to be successful, and it just came 360 as I'm talking to you. Mm -hmm. He said, if you want to be successful in life, you have to think like the DJ. You ever heard him say that? I haven't. Okay, so Jimmy, you should Google it. Jimmy talk, he says, the DJ, while, the, while everyone's on the floor dancing, having a good time, the DJ is already on to the next three or four songs they're going to play. Mm -hmm. So while everybody's having fun, you have to be ahead like the DJ would. So he says that, and I'm like, you a DJ. So mm. it's, you know what I'm yeah. trying to say? So I already know yeah. because of the DJ skill and because of the way I grew up, I have a, a <laughs> this is weird and it's going to sound like I'm like really like giving myself some kind of superpowers and stuff, but I, but I, I, again, engineered to understand why do I have this skill and why does it keep working for me, right? Yes. So like I can sit in a room and I know the whole room in five minutes. I know like what she thinks about, why, what she cares about, why he, what's his agenda, what's he going to try to get from me, what, just from body language, from the, what you're wearing, to how you're dressed, to how you shave your face, to what sneakers you have on, to the words that come out of your mouth, to the reaction that you have to somebody else. Like, and that's like being super intuitive. So when I'm in a meeting, whether I'm raising money for investors or I'm trying to convince an artist to get on a record, I'm already five steps ahead in this conversation. The thing that I haven't perfected that I'm working on now is the patience to wait for you to fucking catch up to me. 
right? Mm. So, so like, <laughs> it gets frustrating because I'm already at the resolution. Yeah. And you're still trying to figure out the problem. Yeah. Mm. You know That's what I'm why saying? I'm at in the music business. That's why I'm at in the music business. I'm frustrated with how they're moving. And I'm like, and I love everybody in it because these are friends that we came up together. But it's like, y'all can't be this dumb to not see that change needs to come and it needs to come now. But see, I don't look at it like, it's easy to say that. And I know what you mean by it. But mm -hmm. like, I don't look at people as dumb. I look at them as inexperienced. And, and not informed. Like, I mean, let's take racism for a second, right? Mm -hmm. I watched this documentary one time where there was like an Indian woman that was like hanging out with like um, white supremacists. And she was hanging out with them and they were like throwing anti-Semitic like pamphlets out on lawns and Jewish communities and all types of like horrible shit. And at the end of this documentary, she says to the guy, the, the leader, do you still not like Jewish people? And he was like, yes, still don't like them. What about black people? Still don't like them. What about me? She's like, no, we like you. You're cool. What happened there? Can anybody in the classroom? The yeah. Is he hung out with her for a day. He got to know her. It he was the experience. He, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't and, see her as, a, as an Indian woman. He it, saw as her who she was. Her and name. that's yeah. all life is. It's just understanding and having the experience with people. My grandmother, when I was young, was a racist. Yeah. Like she was, she would say like things I didn't know it felt wrong, yeah. but like I'm eight years old. Like I don't, yeah. I don't even but know. But not only that, it's your grandmother. You can't, yeah. you can't pick I don't even one. know what racism yeah. is because how I said I grew up, right? Yeah. So every, I love everybody. Yeah. But she would say things like, wow, ah, that doesn't feel right, right? <laughs> and then like, and then like a, as I'm getting older, like my best friend was black. His name yeah. was Kevin. And I'd bring him around. And it was so weird because like after getting to know him, she was like, I, I like your black friend. I was like, he's just my friend, right? Yeah, exactly. like, it, it doesn't matter what he looks like. Yeah, he's my friend, Grandma. For sure. Right? And then inevitably, she started coming. Then my sister had a kid from a black man. Yeah. So like, then it's just kind of like, you got to like you get gotta, down with this yeah. now, right? <laughs> so it's like, by the time she died, <laughs> like she wasn't even the same person yeah, anymore, yeah. right? Because of her experience and her getting to know things. And that's where most hate comes from. It comes it's from taught. even going back. Now I'm talking on a macro scale sure. now, but going back to the micro of just, you know, your beliefs or what your dreams, like your friend or your girl hating on it. That's in a macro. That's what it comes down. I don't understand it. I don't see it. I don't know how I can do it. Yes. Right. But if we all just talk to each other, like imagine, imagine if you could just walk up, imagine if it's like a white guy that didn't understand black culture could just walk up to, you know, five black dudes here in Atlanta and just say, hey, here's some feelings I have about your culture. Yeah. I don't know why I have these feelings, yeah. but I would love to talk to you guys for a few, if you don't mind, yeah. and explain some of the way that you live. I think that conversation be best served at Magic City. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that, that's, really that's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. that is the perfect that's location real. We, we, for that. We've broken the ice. We've right, right. broken like the ice. Right, right. But like, yeah, imagine, but, but, imagine more people did that. But I, I, that to me, I, I never understood it. And it's crazy as you're talking, I'm like, man, Virgos are so much alike. I think more than any sign, because you sound, yeah. does it not sound I like me? Every, 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 every shit I say every day, yeah. but I'm listening to you and I'm like, the thing that you got to understand is, is that I never saw people, I saw the agenda and I had to see what they was taught. And what people don't know is that you can be taught wrong. Mm -hmm. And just because your mother or your dad taught you something don't mean it was right. Right. Because their mother and dad taught them and their mother and dad taught right. them. And bullshit. From gets, their experience. Bullshit gets or handed down. Love. Yeah, yep. exactly. So for me, what I, I always gave people the benefit of the doubt. And like one of my a mentor, he wasn't even a mentor. I can't even call him that because I always felt smarter than him, even when I was 14. But the nigga <laughs> taught me something one day and he changed my life. That was no, literally, he put, a ball, no, he, he put a bottle of water in the middle of the room and he said, the key to life is that bottle of water. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like he was drunk and everything. And he was like, we all could see it, right? He placed it on the floor. And he's like, we all could see it, right? And we all was like, yeah. And he said, but we all see it from different angles. And if we can understand that, we see it from different angles. We can get along and help each other and work better. So I always saw people That's a from fire their angle. drunk yeah, I, example. Listen, Changed uh, my life, by the way. But what, what would have made it better is if he made on. everyone sit around it and <laughs> said, "We're all looking at the same thing, <laughs> but from a different perspective." Right. That's what he said, though. But he yeah. said, "But because he, he's like, he was like, like you see the words, you see the the the, the yeah. barcode, yeah. you see this, you, and it's like, but it's the same thing. But it's the same thing, right. and, it, mm -hmm. and it's like when he taught me that at that, that moment true. when I started interacting with people, I always." tried to understand them. That's dope. It was like, I showed them me, yeah. but I, I wanted to understand them or even help them understand why you're that way. So that's why when, when and by the way, I learned that before Banja, who I said, groomed me, taught me what he taught me. Cause now I got this African guy around me and I wrote in my book, I just finished. And like, he would correct everything. Like, 
if I walked in the club first, he was like, he was the first person in the club before everybody in there. You didn't even, you didn't. and I was like, well, what's wrong with that? I'm trying to get the fuck in the club, man. Like, yeah. it's 10 of us. I want to, I want to be the 10th person in the back, you know, and he just like, but we're not here for you. We're here for him. So you should make sure. So it was always these moments that he taught me and that shit made me better and yeah. it made me want to be better. So I started seeking people energy like yours. Energy like yours would intimidate me where I'm from because mm -hmm. it looks like, it, you can somebody can find it. he's white and he's this and that's why it works and it's like no there's a lot of guys where he's from that's those things but they not him well it's funny because i would get I, I got i'd get beat up by cops because all my friends were black mm. you know what i'm saying so like For sure i obviously i would never understand the plight of a black man because i'll never be black but like as as close as you can be to being right there to like, understand I, the I, difference yeah, yeah like i was yeah just because because i stood up you yeah. know what i mean and i and i cared and yeah. like everything matters to me and I don't yeah. care like what you guys think. Like when I went to school, I used to get arrested all the time as a teenager because I was stealing cars and robbing houses and shit. And then um, my mom sent me to my dad at 15 to the suburbs. Never been to the suburbs before mm -hmm. except when I was robbing homes. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and then, uh, so I go to school there and like, you know, back when we were young, mm -hmm. well, at least up there, maybe yeah. not here, but like there was always like one table of black kids. It was always yeah. like a white school and yeah. like one, right. So like, I was the guy that would sit with like the jocks, the black kids, the Asian kids, the kids downstairs that you don't even know what they're doing all day until you yeah. see them at lunch, yeah. right? And like I'd sit at all of those tables. And early on in my life, which I already pretty much understood, but like everybody mattered to me. So I'd yeah. sit at different tables. Like today I'd sit with them, tomorrow I'd sit with them. And I realized early on, like everyone's the same. Yeah. Everybody just wants an opportunity. Everybody wants to be heard. Everybody wants to be loved and appreciated. Yeah. It's all the same. We just all wear same. different clothes, maybe listen to different music, but we're all the same at the core. Yeah. And I would introduce people like, oh man, you like this game? Yo. And I'd bring like people that would never talk to each other yeah. in school together yeah. all the time. And that's Basically, what I've been doing throughout my career with all my businesses, especially with this new company I'm about mm -hmm. to launch, is I'm putting all the cafeteria tables together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. Right? So they can all hang out and know each other and not, not be victims of inexperience or ignorance, therefore judgments or opinions based off of that. Fire. I'd rather you decide that dude's either a dick or he's not. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter anything else. Absolutely. Got you. When did you think, when did you, what made you say, I want to go into this place of becoming the brand and writing books and showing people how to win in the music industry. And when did you figure out that that space was like great for you? Well, because I kept getting the same kind of emails and DMS and calls you get of every aspiring independent artist thinking that they're the greatest next thing. Yes. Uh, and all they need is you. Yeah. Right. And I just keep hearing that for years. I mean, I'd hear, I've heard it throughout my whole career, not just sure. recently. And then about 2017, I was vice president of Dash Radio. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I was like, man, there's no radio station that can just launch independent artists mm. like nationwide. Well, that was 2016. I go, yeah, there's, there's blocks of shows in different, you know, cities where they play independent artists and stuff. But like, imagine if there was like a, a nationwide Hot 97 mm -hmm. that played all the hot shit, but mixed with up and coming new hot shit. Yes. Like in the regular programming. Yes. So I developed that radio station and it started really taking off. Mm -hmm. uh, then like politics and stuff got in the way. And I was like, man, there's no outlet for these people to get educated, to get opportunity, mm -hmm. to understand how this business works. And like, you know, I, I would argue that I'm one of the, one of the leaders in like, opening what is now everyone's giving out game to like sure. independent yeah, artists are. and stuff like that so like you know i wrote my book five years ago like mm -hmm. nobody, and the stuff everyone's saying now is in my book from five years ago so mm -hmm. i'm like damn did everyone read my book but like <laughs> and i made this course and i did that radio station and that also comes back to giving a shit i've always gave a shit yep and i care about people so when i seen that there was this massive audience of people that need this how do you build a successful business? You provide a, a fix for a problem. Absolutely. And the problem was all these independent unsigned artists not having the right guidance, being scammed on the internet, being told by somebody who says they were part of Rockefeller 20 years ago, like, yo, give me 10,000 bucks and I'm going to help you. And like, how does that guy even go verify he really was part of Jay-Z's career? You can't. Yep. You know what I'm saying? We need to call Jay. Did he really work at Rockefeller? So like, you can't do that. So I was like, fuck, they need an honor guy, an honest guy that can come on. And, to be, and you know who encouraged me to, to write my book was Damon John. That's why he mm, wrote the forward. Yeah. So when I was like, man, I don't want to be out here like all these like fake gurus. Like I feel, 
Like one thing you may know about me is like I never did what everyone else was doing. Yeah, for sure. If everyone else is doing it, I don't want to do it. Sure, me I want to do something different, right? So I didn't want to get online and be like, hey guys, you want to know how to make it in the music business? Check out my new book because I felt yeah. corny, yeah. right? And like Damon John was like, no, who you are is the reason you need to write a book because you need to debunk all the shit that's going on on the internet right now. Yes. Like the world needs you. Yes. It needs an honest, trustworthy person who's really done it. So don't fight it, do it and save it. So that's what made me actually write the book. And I moved over 100,000 copies of my book and I made a course for over 65 videos with Yo Gotti. Are you in it? No, DJ Paul. Like everybody's in my course yeah. uh, giving out game. And like everything you would need to know is in that. You don't even got to go to music school. Yeah. Just go to this course. But why is it free though? I'm just curious. So, so I gave it free. I'm giving it away for free because if my goal is to make the world a better place, which is the common thread here and what we're saying, then it starts with people. Yeah. And if you can make one person at a time become better, which then makes them happier, mm -hmm. which then in turn makes the world better, then why would I have all this game? Here's how I, how I exemplify it. Um, if you're about to touch a hot stove, right? This is the internet now, right? It's like, hold on, don't touch that stove, why? Give me $20, I'm gonna tell you how to prevent yourself from burning, right? And it's like, <laughs> the fuck? You couldn't just tell me that? You had to charge me to not burn my hand? Yeah. So I look at it, if I get all this game yeah. and I can help and I can give it away to, to help the world be better, mm -hmm. why the fuck would I charge? Yeah. I'm kind of an asshole yeah. for doing that. So, like, yeah. so I looked at it like, it's bigger. I don't want your money, I want your success. Yes. Because your success turns the world into a better place. Okay, so you, so you didn't have another way of actually monetizing. It wasn't another thought like if I do this and I give the 100,000 books away, then I can take that and go do these things. Or it was just like the book and the course is for the people and whatever happens, happens. Well, I, when I first did it, yeah. I did do it with the intent of selling it. Yeah. Uh, and so like the first year I had my course and book around, it was for sale. Mm -hmm. And then like as I'm doing that, I started feeling kind of whack that man, these motherfuckers don't even have money for so-and-so, and I'm over here charging them a thousand bucks, which by the way, a thousand bucks is nothing compared to what you're getting. I could have yeah. easily charged 30, 40, 50 K for it. So I'm looking at it like I'm providing a service mm -hmm. that people need for cheaper than you could get anywhere else. Mm -hmm. That's what I was thinking at first. So I already thought I was a hero by doing the whole course for a thousand. I'm like, nobody would do it for this cheap. <laughs> I'm helping people change, right? And then as I'm realizing like, fuck man, motherfuckers ain't got 50 bucks, right? So I felt whack that I'm trying to like beat broke motherfuckers that are trying to do better for their life for a thousand bucks. Originally, I'm looking at it like, man, if you ain't investing in yourself, then you, sh you shouldn't even be contending, right? Mm -hmm. but, that, but there's so much talent that you might not have that much money to do that. But so now you're just wasting your talent. So it was kind of feeling bad. The information was more important. The people people having, having the information to build a better life that they could then share with somebody else or build a career. Very selfless. The, the goal was to help make people better to, so they can be happier and then make the world a better place. So if there's anything, if, that, if, if that's my contribution to making even, you know, a couple dozen people have a better life. And, they, and trust me, I get my DMs are flooded with people showing me that they're getting on charts, showing me that they understand things now, showing me that they're having success. And it's like, it's so much. And I'm almost numb to it now yeah, of how sure. many people it's helping, right? You don't even, but, but this is also who I've been my whole career. Most of the, the, the big successes I've had throughout my career, which you guys probably don't even know like half of what I've done uh, because it's not public. It's just, I'm behind the scenes just doing it for no, culture, you know. right? And it's like, I've done it to have, just to help culture or to help people or to provide new opportunities or to, to break the mold. Can you right? give us some examples of some things that you were behind? Yeah, uh, I discovered and found DJ Snake and signed DJ Snake, like the, like the world's probably arguably biggest DJ in the world right now. Mm -hmm. Like I discovered him in a basement party in 07 in Paris. He couldn't even hardly speak English. And, you know, he came up to us with a CD, like I got the beats on the CD. I'm a big <laughs> fan of your mixtapes. You know, can you listen to my beats? <laughs> right? And, uh, <laughs> and, uh, and um, oh, I have hilarious stories of us. Like, <laughs> but uh, anyways, yeah. So like, again, there was just something about, and you know, it's all about your approach, right? Everybody can come like, yo, I'm the best. I'm the greatest. Yo, we could do this. But like the best people, even, even Offset said this to me one time. I was like, when you guys were starting off, like how did you run around and let people know? 
He's like, we just be like, yo, we offset. We, we, we Migos, look out for us. Mm -hmm. That's it. It wasn't like, let me bust a rap for you. It wasn't like, yo, we doing X, Y, and Z. We Migos, look out for us. Yep. Right? So like the way that, and that's having confidence to know. We're going to be there. You're going to know you're about gonna us. You're going to see me. Because we're going to put the work in yep. to make you. We got you. <laughs> uh, we're going to put the work in to make you know about us. Right? So when Snake gave me that CD, you know, we listened to it. And just the way that he approached it. It wasn't braggadocious. It wasn't like desperate. It wasn't like, look, by the way, like people like us, we know. Like we've been around every personality. We know exactly who you are, the way that you approach us, what you're trying to get out of it. If it's desperate, if it's cocky, if it's bullshit, like we just know. You feel so it. you need to know that people you're trying to be down with that are successful. Success, success knows success. Period. Right? So if you're not, if, when you're trying to impress success, you're going to impress us with real success. Yep. Not words. And I would say real right? effort. Like, yes. like seeing you. Like I said. Well, that's part of success. Yeah, exactly. Not getting the goal. Success is how you communicate, how you talk, how you approach, how you work. That's all part of success, right? It doesn't mean you have to make all the money now. But anyway, so yeah, DJ Snake, like nobody knew that I discovered. I mean, we had platinum records before we even got to turn out for what? We had Grammy nominations already before you even know who DJ Snake was. We produced for Plies, Ludacris, Pitbull, T-Pain, Akon, like all these people. I used to put him on for like 10 minutes in the, the middle of my sets, like in Vegas and stuff, mm. to try to get people, because I'm trying to help uplift yeah, for him. Sure. For sure. Like he was super shy. If you watch Shut It Down by Pitbull and Akon, that video, me and him are two of the villains in the video. Like you didn't even know that was Snake. I was yeah. even dope. Now, DJ Snake is, is pivotal for what's happening with I'm a Piano and just the, how the sound is starting to cross over and you're having the mix of electronic music and yeah. Afrobeat and really creating what I'm a piano is. Yeah, yeah. So. No, Snake, Snake's incredibly talented, super smart, totally gets it. And I could get that he got it early on. And that's why we invested, you know, five, six years before we got to turn down for what? And that was yeah. me introducing him to Little John. Mm. Funny story about that is uh, we kept hitting John. I kept hitting John about sending him beats for me and Snake. Yeah. And then John was going to Paris one time and I go, oh, you guys should connect. So he's like, all right, send me his number. So I sent him his number, and then John leaves, and then I hit Snake. I go, did you connect with John? Mm -hmm. He was like, no. I go, why? He goes, uh, I don't know what to say to him. And I'm like, what the fuck, man? Just become <laughs> friends with him. I already know. I had, to, I had to force the friendship, and then, and then, and then they end up becoming cool, and then, one, then I finally get a call one day. I pick up the phone. Man, fuck your French friend. <laughs> and I'm like, what happened? It's John. Yeah. And he's like, Man, fucking Snake sent me a record. And then there's a whole story about how it turned yeah. out for what happened. Yeah. That was like a lot of turmoil before yeah. that became a real record. But yeah. Yeah, I didn't even know that they started talking again until I answered my phone. And you know, John, <laughs> yeah, exactly. man, exactly. fuck your friend, friend. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck happened? What are you talking about? Exactly. But yeah, um, so, Snake. Um, so another big thing that nobody would know, except I won't say the name, so I'll give it away, but... Um, so early in 2000, I built the world's biggest mixtape site. It was called mixunit.com. Uh, we made 5 million our first year. That's how mm. big it was. It was so big that, uh, it ran a lot of people out of business that were in the mixtape game. And one of my friends were like, man, what am I going to do now? I can't even run this shit. Your shit is too big. And I was like, bro, you know, what'd be dope is if you like be an aggregator of all the shit that goes on in the hood and like at clubs, like we be there when we see stabbings and shit, but like the rest of the world don't yeah. see that. If you aggregate and do that, all the fucking white kids would go crazy over all this shit because it's they're not near other streets and the yeah. hood and the clubs and hip hop. And that was World Star Hip Hop, my friend Q. Yeah. So then Q went and launched World Star Hip Hop. But like, you know, the year that he passed, he was coming to my home like, you know, once a month. Cause I was trying to convince him, I'm like, the brand is so big, bro. Like, why are we not doing Rolling Loud? Like, Rolling Loud is rolling. But before Rolling Loud, I'm like, why are we not doing festivals? Why aren't we setting up a publishing company at World Star? Why don't we have World Star distribution? Some that stuff exists now, but yeah. it didn't then, right? Mm -hmm. And he's like, so we were talking about it, and then what we what other thing I was doing, I was like, we should find black screenwriters in in fund their their film put it on world star as a world star original yeah. like camera. listen and then upstream it to revolt yeah. so like we were getting at puff about doing all this stuff was in the works so much so that one time we were going down the elevator in my apartment building and he was like man sparks how much percentage you want a world star and i was like huh and he was like man you've been here since the beginning you still here helping like 
we got to figure something out. And I was like, I, I wasn't doing this to, to own anything, man. I'm just doing it because you're my friend. Yeah. Going back to the point of just doing it for culture. Mm -hmm. And he was like, nah, we got to figure something out. And that was the last thing he said to me before he died. Mm. But also it's a testament to him mm -hmm. showing his heart yeah. and remembering who was there from the beginning and who is still here now mm -hmm. and not asking, didn't have their hand out. I wasn't, I didn't, I, didn't, I wanted you to win. Mm -hmm. You got this big brand that you built, Right. Why are you not like doing more for it? And if I can help show you how to do more for it, that then goes and helps other people. Back to my point, why would I not give you that game or help mm. without saying, "Well, yo, let's make sure the paperwork's right," and I got my my cut. Yeah, I hate those. I'm kind good. Of I'm gonna be fucking dope with or without you. Yep. I'm gonna get my money doing what I do. I don't need your money. Yeah. If you want to now propose something like he did, then let's, let's figure that out. I'm down that's for like that. all right, yeah. like. Let's figure it but out. That's not what I'm here for. Yeah, like, yeah, like if I call Ray and say, yo, Ray, I got this thing going on, da-da-da, I don't expect Ray to say, yeah, I need a check. Because I'm going to be like, Ray's a dick. Yeah. You know what I mean? And Ray, and Ray <laughs> just know. missed out on something dope that if he wasn't smart enough to know that I vetted it out and I already mapped this out before I called him, that's his bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because guess what? I'm going to find you, somebody else. You called me for one thing, and I wasn't in a position to do it, but I always appreciated that. You, you were the first person to call me about gaming. Mm -hmm. And you were the first person to call me, I want to say it was FaZe Clan, as yep. they were like, right before they blew up, and you was like, put some money in this. I got some rappers putting money in this, and Ray, we're going to pop it off. And then all of a sudden, I wasn't in a position to do it anyway, but all of a sudden it was like, boom. I probably wasn't in a position. I wasn't in a mindset. Yeah. I didn't understand yeah, no, no investments and stuff no, like that. Yeah. You know how hard it was for me to convince? Like, I got Offset, Yo Gotti, DJ Paul, Ray J, Pitbull, Troy Carter, uh, big boy, I got all these people to invest in gaming when they, when when gaming was just kind of emerging to the the, the non endemic gaming world, right? Mm -hmm. So when I got with this company called Phase Clan, they were just a bunch of popular kids online that built a big following, but they didn't have a business model, they didn't have revenue drivers. So you know, we came in and did all that stuff, and it went on to become a billion dollar IPO. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was me integrating. You know, again, in that world too, much like this, you know, giving out education, but even in that world, I'm one of the leaders, if not the biggest leader in integrating culture into gaming. You are. You know, there was a couple of things that happened, but like I was the guy mm -hmm. championing why you guys need to be like when I go to Puff or Snoop and I'm like, here's why you guys need to be involved with this. This is the fucking next thing. And here's why it makes sense for who you are and what you've done. But that also... It's also an understanding of people's needs, what they've done, what they haven't done, what they should be doing with their career. And that's architecting. It's also having a manager's mindset. Yeah. You already made this sound, mm -hmm. even a producer's mindset. So all of my skills come into play because as a producer, if we all hear Rihanna's working on a new album, we need records. 99% of producers, and Ray can attest to this, are going to make records that sound like what Rihanna already uh -huh. did. Because they're like, oh, she'd sound amazing on this. It sounds just like Rihanna. Someone like me is like, nah, how do I bring her to the next level without making it so foreign that she doesn't get it or her fans are like, she went totally left, but it's still stretching her uh, artistry to evolve to something new that now that's what we're all making. Do you know mm. what I'm saying? And like that, the same thing goes on in business. And people don't do that. Everyone's busy trying to be the next that thing that already worked or copy something else because it worked for them. It must work for me. Even as an artist, like it's not the same for everybody. And I don't subscribe to the, if I can do it, so can you. Nah, we ain't the same. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So if we're from the same hood and we got the same surrounding, just because I made it doesn't mean you can make it, in my mm. opinion, because you may not think the way that I think. You may not have been willing to sacrifice the way that I sacrificed. You might not communicate. You might not care about educating yourself about this as much as I did. So it ain't as easy as, man, if I can do it, y'all can too. Because y'all might be lame motherfuckers that ain't ready to put the work in that I put in. So it ain't exactly. that easy. Exactly. Real. Exactly. So we have this part of the show we play called Making the Cut, um, where we're basically going to throw three options at you. Clinton Sparks. Uh, I'll take that one. You <laughs> <laughs> and you have to pick someone to cut, someone to develop, and someone to sign. If you uh, don't want to pick, I we don't make good. people take shots. We make pe it's it's this little thing right here, the Creative Academy. It's a nonprofit we partner with. 
and we ask, if you don't want to answer, you donate $20 to the nonprofit if you don't want to answer a question. I'll, I'll donate 50 I got you. Mm -hmm. But, so we're going to give you some questions, and you got to answer, and then, you know, it's, it should be some fun. It's not all music, by the way, so get ready. You all ready? Right. Yeah. I'm going to start up this way. I don't like hurting people's feelings. Uh, nah, no, this is no, good. No, 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 this is a game. It's all fun and games. Start this way. What am I cutting them from? It's your, your enterprise. Yeah. It's oh. however you want to do it. So all these random people work in my company. This random everything. It's not going to just be people. It'll be, once you get into the game, you'll understand right, where we're right, going. All right, all right. All right. So, so I'm. Let, sign. Develop. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's not all people. No. no. That's, that's so I'm going to start off with this right here. These are bizarre rules. This is a good right. one. Okay. The Boston Celtics, the New England, New England Patriots, the Boston Red Sox. Uh, well, the Red Sox need to be developed right now. <laughs> <laughs> Start the uh, uh, Why didn't you make the Bruins one of them? So I could have cut that. Uh, I'm not a hockey fan. The, the, the whole um, point is to make it a little difficult for you because you're a Boston guy. Um, yeah, I can't, I can't disrespect anything from Boston. So oh, $20 for yeah, the kids? Yeah, yeah. $20 for the kids. $20 for the kids. <laughs> the kids don't lose. The kids don't lose. Okay, hold on. So new addition... New edition. New kids Nine. on the block. <laughs> New kids on the block. Stop doing Boston shit, man. This is Jack. Got... Jack's not here, but Jack said all these. these is I'm all not going to disrespect anything in Boston. <laughs> no, but it's going to be easy because the last one is in sync. And then oh, I'm from Boston. Oh, cut in sync. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah. Um, sign new edition and develop new kids. Mm. Okay. okay. Another one. Bill Russell, Larry Bird, Paul Pierce. Cut Paul Pierce. Um, sign Larry Bird, and man, this is weird. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, and then whatever the other is, you know, develop Bill Russell. Develop yeah, like, okay, like he needs to be developed. But that's what I'm saying. Like everybody's developed what, 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 already in this game. Well, the thing is, is that this is your enterprise, and I usually start with music, but because of how we started, I went. I used to start with music, then I go everywhere All else. Right. But I want to All start right. here because I want to right. show you the difference. All right, we need uh, we need this game needs to change from develop to a different word because everybody you're saying is developed. No, but here's no 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 no. Here's what I, here's the thing though. This is your company, and you might feel like I like that person. Development just means I don't feel like they're ready for where I'm at, and I would probably make a change or two to get them ready for where I'm at. And cut is just cut. I'm so I'm totally like aware of the definition of development. <laughs> no, that's what I'm saying, but I'm like that's the whole point though. Yeah. Like you like the whole point is it's your enterprise, so you yeah. might. Everybody answers differently. All right. I would hope so. <laughs> no, no. Some people ask. Some people get deep into it. Like, I'm going to develop him because he needs to work on one, two, and three, and four, five, and six, and it's fun. Uh -huh. All right, cool. I'm going to go some music now. All right. Jay-Z, Kanye West, Drake. <laughs> Nobody's from Boston. Nobody needs developing. Nobody's... Well, obviously, the easy one to say cut now is Kanye at this point. Mm. But like... But I don't want to cut Kanye. Like, I don't. The kids, uh, the kids, the kids. Oh, the kids. Yeah, the kids. The, the kids, kids, the kids. That's what I said. We got 40. We got 40, right? The kids, the kids, kids. I'm going to give you an R&B one. By the way, uh, we, this is more just your taste level, so we love it. Usher, Chris Brown, Kells, Strictly Music. I'm cutting Kells all day. Who wouldn't cut Kells? Nah, some they people, listen, you wouldn't believe it. You, you wouldn't, wouldn't cut R. Kelly. Absolutely not. You should get off this couch <laughs> and be fired from this show because that means we know what he condones <laughs> and what he participates no, 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 in. That's what I said. We try not to include it. We try not to include no, the personal well, life. No, you have to include it. Why the fuck would I cut him? Because of that bullshit. It, so that's it, why I cut him. Said, as far as life, I'm cutting him in life. However, you talk about... No, you have to take all things in it. Though. It's my enterprise. <laughs> I, that's how you make your decisions. I, I, he, I, might, he might make the decisions like on money. It. You I, make I, your decisions on I have different. to take all well, things considered. Put all the cards on the table. I'm with you. Wait, wait, wait. So you're telling me if you own an enterprise and some guy is outstanding at his job... No. But he's touching Did little kids. No. You're like, ah, I'm willing to not absolutely pay attention not. to that. Absolutely so not. how the fuck could you say cows? He said, he said I said, I said, All focus on the music. No, you can't. I saw. I said, no, but you don't you have change to the know. rules as we go. The rules were: <laughs> it's an enterprise. He prefaced before he asked the question. So All <laughs> things considered. <laughs> All things considered. So you have to consider. If someone works at my company and they're still an employee, but they're treating women wrong. 
I have to take that in consideration that's whether real. I'm cutting or Absolutely. developing. That's, that's true. true. Right? So I love it. I'm just, it. Listen, this is your answer. All right, so you're asking someone that actually knows how to run an enterprise. Let's so. go. Right now. All right. So, so we yeah. cut R. Kelly. Kel's cut. Okay. We're embarrassed that we hired him in the first place. Uh, right? <laughs> uh, um, uh, what were the other two? Uh, Chris Brown Usher. Well, Usher's, Usher is the father of Chris Brown, so I'd, I'd go with sign and develop. Okay, cool. Um, and I'm sure Chris Brown would say that too. And then Michael Jackson's the father of Usher. Three True. Yeah, three True. generations of dope. I'm going to give you a couple more. Thanks, Michael. I'm going to give you a couple more. <laughs> Ludacris, T.I., Lil Wayne. I think you produce for two. I'm not, I'm, the kids. The kids. Yeah, <laughs> I love when we pick the kids. <laughs> the kids. We got $60 for the kids. They're going to be in. We got to make sure we set them up. All right. All right. All right. All right. One more just because I like to answer, ask this one. Reasonable doubt. Illmatic. Ready to die. Uh, signing ready to die. Um, developing uh, reasonable doubt in cutting Illmatic. That's what I would say, by the way. By the way, that's, that, that, by the way, that's my answer. That's my answer. That, that's you, know what's, you know what's funny? Like when I was young... <laughs> uh, Hip hop people would kill yeah. me if I ever said that. <laughs> no, I say it. We wanna... I wasn't like a. I wasn't a big Nas fan yeah, when I, I was that young. Was I, I was a huge Biggie yeah. fan, huge Jay Z fan, yeah. Pac fan. But like, yeah, I just I didn't. I don't know why. I just, you know, some artists yeah. that just don't connect to you. Yeah, I don't know why. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. Super respect. Dope. And thought it was dope. I can acknowledge it's dope. But I just but was, I, I didn't know. sit through a whole album yeah. like this is my jam. This is my jam. Like, yeah, I feel I feel I feel the same way. I'm not like that. It wasn't it wasn't a paid in full album for me. Yes. Yeah, because I was gonna say Biggie Ready to Die to me had that was probably the best debut rap album, dude. I still remember the day so of all time. It's so funny the year debut leading up, the for year a solo artists, the year leading up to Ready to Die. I remember distinctly saying to my friends, "Doesn't it feel like hip hop is dying, mm -hmm. like it's fading away?" And then I remember there was a kid, yeah, walking down the street with the radio playing Juicy, mm. and I was sitting on a stoop and I was like. What the fuck is that? Yeah. And I got up and I walked on the other side of the street so I could listen to that song. Wow. And I was like, I don't know who the fuck this is, yeah. but whatever this is, is going to change hip hop. Wow. And I remember thinking that, and I had another one of those moments. What? And this isn't a hindsight. Yeah, this sure. actually happened. I was like, this is going to change hip hop. And it did. Yeah. Biggie and then Bad Boy yeah. fucking revived hip hop, right? Yes. And then I remember walking in Best Buy to buy a TV and you know how they'll have like uh, reels of like new artists and videos coming yeah, up on sure. TV back then they did? Sure. Or mm -hmm. well, you'll see it in Foot Locker or whatever. So I remember seeing this girl dancing in the song playing and I'm listening to the song. So it, it, it got my attention so much I stopped shopping and watched it. And I was like, I don't know who the fuck this is, but this is about to be the next biggest thing ever. And it was Oops, I Did It Again by Britney Spears. Uh, oh, Wow. Crazy. I mean, obviously the label knew yeah, that for too because sure. they signed it. For but sure, like, for sure. you know, being someone that never heard of it and just seen it and predicted this is going to be the that, biggest that, ever. That's how I was about Drake. When I remember when he first came out, I was like, and I, I you know, because at the end of, you know, hip hop, if you still look at it, you still have the legends like Nas, Jay, Big, Pac. But when he came, I was like, he, this guy's going to be, and yeah, those are two I'm like, yeah. I remember arguing. I got the name the culture referee because I was arguing at a table with someone a room full of powerful people about uh, saying Kanye is be has a better catalog than Jay-Z. Mm. And this is like two years ago. And I'm like, yeah. he, he has a better catalog. Oh, yeah. no, he does. You bug it. I'm like, bro. Yeah, that's all subject to opinion. Yeah, but, but, but that, and then Kasim, the mayor, he was like, your name needs to be the coast referee because you're just unafraid to say yeah. some shit. So that's why I got I it from. Generationally, we, I, we have those as well. Like I sat there when I, when I seen Juice World for the first time, I said, I knew he's going to transition and trends. Like culture, he'll be able to take us to another level. What we really? Do. Well, that all started with like <laughs> XX. No, why about him? No, 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 that's good though because I, I want to. Yeah, but that stemmed with fans was like on a was, different level. Well, because it was also a different fan. Yeah. Now. Yes. So like X Extension kind of kicked open that door yeah. of like, you know, whatever. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, listen to the first song. Even the quality of the song was fucking dumb. It started, like, yeah. They didn't even mix this yeah. shit. It's like it's worse than uh yeah. uh a milli, a milli. Yeah, yeah. When that beat used to kick in, you'd have to turn the bass down because yeah. the mix was so yeah. fucked up. And yeah, like I can see that. When, when X came out, I remember hearing that for the first time, and oh fucking and I was like, yo, this is what's gonna happen next yes. in hip hop. Yeah. And it was funny because you have that because then little Yachty kind of led the the new young generation of what we're doing, like being a trendsetter and then Juice World and all those guys. But like, yeah, you could see it. And then there was that era where it's like old heads and new heads were bumping heads. Yep. 
because, yep. oh, what is this mumble rap shit? And da da da. da. And it's like, when I used to get mad at like the older heads, and I'd be like, this shit is fucking fire. Y'all need to catch up and keep up. Because like 2016, throughout our whole life mm-hmm. in music, things like history, we would all know what happened before us yep. because the one with the world was smaller because it wasn't the internet and social media. So like even the Beatles, like Michael Jackson, there's kids now who don't even know who the fuck Michael Jackson is. That never happened generations before that. Mm-hmm. Good music was passed on. Yep. But then like this is the first generation where almost history is erased. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like everything that happened before this and talk about... Uh, what was it? You, one of you guys did something about like being so confident, like whatever. But yes, I asked you about yeah, it. but like, but like these kids now think they are inventing this shit. Yeah, that like nah, you just biting '90s grunge. Yeah, nah, you just taking this and you don't even know it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So like, it's almost like the world 2016 prior was deleted. Yeah, from like this younger generation. That's real. So yeah, media yeah, and like now everything is from then on. Yeah. But yeah. you know what it right? is? So we all have individual. Mm-hmm. Or there was one stereo in a house and everybody had to listen. Yeah, your mom was in the Commodores and, and Holland Oats. You had to listen to it. Now you could put headphones on. Like, Sunday mornings, you knew it was Sunday because you would wake up to certain right. music being played in the house. That's one of the things that's contributing to that lack of generational hands Yeah, but, 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 but it's also, they have access to too much information. Too, too much. Right. And because they have access to so much information, they feel like they know. And they can, you can find a narrative that says... This person is a great person. You can find a narrative saying this person is a piece of shit. You can, like the internet feeds any, well, any I'll, appetite. I'll, t- I'll tell you something that you will 100% agree with is that everybody out here thinks now they read a book, they watch you know, Instagram, they get a course, they go to a conference, that now they got what it takes yeah. to become successful. And they yeah. think they know. Google. And the one thing, and, you know, this is the Virgo, or this is just experience, yeah. right? The one thing you cannot do is put an old head on young shoulders and there's nothing that will give you more ROI than experience. Mm-hmm. So I don't give a shit what you know or what you read. You haven't dealt with real life. And like Michael, like Mike Tyson said, everyone's got a plan so you get punched in the face. And then they all, right? yep. and, like, and you don't know. Yeah, you read this book. You've seen that. You've seen how it maybe worked for that person. You don't know everything that happened underneath and you also don't know what it feels like when you get punched in the face and how you're going to react. That book don't teach a manager how to get their back end paid. Mm-mm. <laughs> right. Now like you're right. Now you're right. Now you, it, it's, it's, to me, the best teacher's experience, but they're not experiencing anything. They're learning or watching based on what they want, and they're building their opinion on that. So to me, the, that's why I stress to people like yourself and myself, if we don't talk, we're doing a disservice to the mm-hmm. world because if they don't, and they'll hear your voice. I mean, they hear my voice and... Like you wouldn't believe how many of my friends in the music business that I've known for 20 years or 15 years have come to me and been like, my kid loves you. Yep. Like, I remember I was at an event and Candy walked away. You like, should have been like, what about you though? <laughs> 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 no, no, but it, it was almost like they were, it was almost like you could tell that they were like, kind of like shocked. Like, yeah. yo, Ray, like, cause it's almost like, it's like my son it. said, yeah. I want to meet Clint Sparks. I'm like, you want to meet Clint? That's my guy. You want to meet him? And then when I come to you, I need to make sure he knows. Yeah. Daddy knows. Like, this is my guy. So it's mm-hmm. a lot of, like, my, my son or my daughter is a fan of what you're doing. And it's dope to me because it means when you open your mouth, you all attract. That's what I tell people. Open your mouth, you're going to attract the tribe. Right. If you don't attract the tribe, that means you probably ain't saying nothing worth hearing. And you should probably figure out what to say next time you open your mouth because no tribe has showed up for you. Right. But you have built a tribe. And I am just starting to build a tribe. And I, I know you can feel it because I can't go outside without feeling it. Mm-hmm. Like, so, and I think that that's, that's what we have to do more of. I think the generations before these kids now, they so busy thinking that they are raised like they're raised. No, these kids are raised with access to everything. Mm-hmm. And if you're not stopping to make them feel okay to ask a question or talk anything, you're doing them a disservice because all they're going to do is be feel like, like you said, like, Unk, unk, y'all don't know nothing. Y'all don't know. It's, well, I know how yeah, well, it is. Well, that's you know that's the number one reason why you know kids don't listen to parents because they don't relate or they don't ah you're too old you don't get it it was different in your day. Well, this is the first time in history that parents and kids watch the same streaming thing, listen to the same shit, wear Say the that. same clothes, go, care about the same things, watch the same news. Everything's I, the same. I, that's why I yeah. swear to God I say that. I'm well, like, you the probably first said time it after history. I said that to you when I interviewed you on my show. <laughs> you did on my. No, I've been saying yeah, this for like five years. You know what? Yeah, I'm gonna well, tell you when I, I said you it. Five years ago. No, no, no okay, I'm gonna tell you yeah. when I said it. I'm gonna tell you when I said it. We my always son, each other, man. My Good. son, I had an Instagram video. He pulled out. He put out playing Dam's album, Kendrick's Dam album. Mm-hmm. 
and my and little Raymond had to be about like nine, mm-hmm. and he was like, "I got loyalty," and I was like, "I'm listening to the same <laughs> yeah. shit right now." Yeah. Like it was, it was like my me and my son me. compare. Yeah, yo, did you hear this new music? Did yeah, you hear this artist and da da da. Yeah, we put each other up on it. But you know, the reason if you can if you can master this this skill, not only be able to like connect and relate to your kids, like me and my son, like we talk. Like since he was young, I never yelled at him. I never punished him. I never reprimanded him. I always talked to him mm-hmm. about whatever the problem was. So he's very analytical and he talks and communicates now. But like when you are able to relate to somebody and make them understand that you understand how they think without trying to tell them that you understand. Most people are like, oh, I get what you guys are doing. You don't think I understand when I was young or, yo, I do this. And like you're trying to force them to believe that you're worthy to listen to. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you can strategically ma- and manipulate, and manipulate is, lo- is looked at as a negative word, but it's not when you're doing it to get people out of their own way. If you're able to speak in a way that makes them understand that you get how they think without telling them that, now they're going to start listening to you. So my son, I can't tell you how many times he's like, it's like you're in my fucking head, Aww. right? So and I've done that with artists. I've done that with investors. Because if you go there and let them know and they feel and understand that you understand and feel them, mm-hmm. what you're trying to accomplish now gets accomplished because they get that you're not doing it for selfish reasons and there's no hidden agenda. You're doing it because you get what they need yes. because you care about what they feel. Yes. So that's how you can get through to anybody. It starts with not trying to convince how great you are, how great the opportunity is. It's letting them know in a strategical way that you get how they feel and what they need to feel and how they think and what they need. I love that. I love that. Can I ask one more question before we go into the last? Go ahead. Um, so you've been. Can I break the world record for the longest interview? Can we do that today? <laughs> <laughs> you got to play it again. <laughs> right, oh, you got to go. No, yeah. I'm good for a while. Right, so, um, you That's his way of saying no. <laughs> you've been in the industry for the past 20 years. Where do you see hip hop going in the next 20 years? <sighs> so. Over the past couple years, I had predicted that. Um, people were going to start borrowing from heavy metal and grunge music, and it happened. And then I started predicting that people were going to start using guitar riffs in their music more often. And, and then I was predicting, and it hasn't happened yet, but I feel it's going to get to this way, that we'll have like a black Blink-182, right? And then that's one, but then also meaning hip-hop in culture is is kind of moving into adopting and adapting other things that they wouldn't have touched before. Or, or yeah, like Uzi, and like, or even like, you know, Post Malone uses a lot of like guitars and stuff, right? I think it would be great if it went more, and, it, and people are doing it. Or they're starting to do it. I've been saying this for years, that if we're going to start kind of bringing full-on grunge rock music mm-hmm. mixed with rap. Mm-hmm. Right. I, it, it's going it's to have to branch out to what yeah, it is like because because then it makes it more because yeah. what happens then too is like right now music has been you know you know f- for the in the history of life pop music has dominated radio by like 80 mm-hmm. percent right and for the first time ever hip-hop overtook pop music mm-hmm. and it's not now but like it was at one point the dominant thing mm-hmm. so now there's kind of a, a point right now where like where do we go with hip-hop you know pop is always going to be pop what are we doing? Everything sounds like, I'm sure you all agree, like every fucking hip hop song sounds the same. Like everyone yeah. talks about the same shit. Everyone gets an 808, the same hi-hat, the same. Now, now it's even so whack that we're all just sampling the same thing from packs. Yep. No one even goes and searches. You got loopers now. You yeah, got people yeah, that just like, yeah, give me loops. I'm a professional looper. <laughs> for like, and you know how many times different producers send beats to me and I'm like, oh, it's the same loop that guy used. They didn't go looking for that obscure mm-hmm. and flip it in a certain way. They went for packs. They shared it with everybody yeah, in the world. it's whack as yeah. fuck. And it's like, yo, when it's so manufactured and whack and easy like that, you lose the art and the excitement of creativity, mm-hmm. right? So everyone's got more money than you, more jewelry mm-hmm. than you, fucks more chicks than you, like has this than you. And it's like, that's not even really your life anymore. I know it was yeah. aspirational at one point to say that because you want to like manifest it, right? Mm-hmm. Or back to the beginning of this interview, you lie so much, you believe you're actually that fucking rich and dope, yep. right? But like... Where I think it's going to go to is actual, real substance of what I'm going through in life. What hip-hop was at one point. Look, hip-hop was created out of the struggle. 
Here's what we're going through. Here's a picture of the hood. Here's what I have to deal with, right? No one's talking about mental health. No one's talking about their, their addiction to social media. No one's talking about, like, I wish I could stop looking at fucking Pornhub all the time. Yeah. No one's talking. Like, no, no, I'm being serious. Like, all the kids are going through the same problems, but they're all afraid to tell each other that we're going through this shit to not look corny, right? Somebody's going to come out and start, and it's going to start being a trend where, like how now, everyone, and I'm not, this isn't disrespectful, For but sure. everyone's got mental health. Mm-hmm. What we call mental health back in the day is we're just fucking stressed out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, or I'm pissed off at something. Or they're crazy. Or yeah, they're just yeah, crazy. Or they're crazy. Yeah. Like, they're actually genuinely crazy, mm-hmm. right? And it's like now everybody gets a little bit of anxiety. And like, you know, I need some time to take a look at my, we all have fucking anxiety, man. Like, that's part of your human anatomy. That's part, that's part of this. That's yeah, part of the problem. Is to have anxiety when you take risks, when you're trying new things, when you go on a new date, you got yeah. butterflies. Like, like when you meet somebody new. Like it's a human thing. It's just human it's feelings. Human. It's not mental health, right? So, like the same way that everybody's talking about and openly talking about uh, them having mental health, I think we'll keep going a step further, and people will be okay about talking about broken hearts. People will talk about feeling inadequate. People will talk about feeling insecure. Because guess what? That's what everybody feels. And if you want to connect with everybody, then make the shit that everyone's going to relate to and like you because back to the relating thing I was just talking about. If you're saying, why do most people and girls love Drake? Because he says real shit that you're really fucking feeling. Like you can, like back when we were younger, why do we love Biggie? Because the story he was telling was so relatable. That shit happened last week to us. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's, so it's, it's like he's it's, speaking for us. It's the, it's the, and it it's was so shit. vivid where he could say something like the change fell out of my pocket between the, the middle of the car and the seat. It's so like, yeah, I know that feeling. Do you know what I'm saying? So like, I think people need to start and are already, but more prevalently be uh, open with being honest with themselves and their feelings and sharing that through music. It doesn't make you less cool. You can do it over cool music. I mean, bro, when's the last time you heard a guy get on a song and say, Hey, baby, I apologize. I really love you. And I'll, do, I'll get on my knees and apologize for what I do. I'll do anything to get your love back. Let me when say, the fuck wait, do you hear that shit? You know what I tell artists when I meet with them? Anytime I talk to them, they play the music. And the music is, get money, get bitches. I got this, I got this, I got this. And then after the music plays and you start to get to know them, you're like, so tell me about yourself. And then they start being honest. Like, man, I'm trying yeah. to get out the hood. I'm like, yo, mom. put that in the song. I'm, no, I always say, where's that song? Yeah, exactly. Because that's the most relatable Even girls part now, too. Even girls. Like, man, there's so much for women to talk about. Mm-hmm. Like, real shit. Like, I am a single mom. This is fucking hard as fuck to do yeah. this shit, to have a job. I do have these motherfuckers looking down at me. I did struggle. My mom was on fucking crack. They're like, all this shit. But you out here fucking slanging ass. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like that's twerking real. No, that's real. all the like, time. Like, 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 my pussy's better than yours and da-da-da-da. Like, yeah. It's like, man, all right, well, let, tell me that in the bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll be the judge of that, by the yeah, way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Not for real. Not for real. Like, and I, I say, I, I, I always say that I think that the reason why that's happened is because you don't have people like us in the rooms giving them permission to be great. Because I feel like a lot of artists, artists, if, if you really know artists, artists are insecure. Like, they, they all they most insecure well, people, people are, they, are insecure. No, I'm saying, but artists are the most delicate. Like an executive, you could say, I don't like that shit, yeah. they'll take it. But right. an artist, they might cry in the car. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I mean by like they're I delicate. Quit. Yeah, I should <laughs> quit. You told me I wasn't good. And I said, yeah. that's not good. You can go be better, but they right. need to hear that. But you know, I, I forgot my train of thought, but I was just saying these artists out here are sensitive and they need people in the room that are like it's okay it's to be okay to be publicly. it's okay to be sensitive yeah. it's so i mean drake I think, does it yeah but the i'm the number one artist in the world Rod the most Wade. sensitive dude right Rod away Rod yeah. like like yeah. just just tell the truth but we have this we need black, more of that we have yeah. this we need th- less faking it and more making it yes Real, that, more, that, by more the way, just being honest. Man, you should have just been quiet. That was a yeah. killer ending. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a that, 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 that was wrapping back up from yeah, the beginning, yeah, like no, a comedian no, no. that brings the joke from the beginning back to the end. No, nah, well, because we got to get to this. We got to get to this last subject. It's just we do this section called credit check. Um, I hate when people say give someone their flowers because flowers die, and it's, it's usually ref, ref, yeah, reference to. Reference to some giving to someone flowers <laughs> at their grave, right? Yeah, and yeah. for me, it's like, I don't want flowers. I want credit. Yeah. So, because I can leverage credit. Like, give me credit so I can do something with it. Like The best credit that you could build, it, the, the best IP you could ever build is yourself. Yes. And the best credit you could ever have is credibility. Credibility, exactly. So, this is where I ask you to shout out two people 
two or three people in that are unsung heroes in the Clinton Spark story that you just feel like, man, I want to just thank them for whatever they did. My thinking might be the Guinness Book of World Records <laughs> of the length of this. Um, <laughs> well, you know, you know why I say that? And this may come off dickish. There's, there's a lot of like, a lot of things that people, little things that people have done that might have, he connected me to that. He did like, like, so there's tons of people responsible for helping me during my journey. For sure. But there, I can't really name... Okay, Kamau Georges, um, who has been my producing partner my whole career, um, has been a springboard for, for great thought. Uh, I mean, we would get in the studio and talk for five hours about life before we even started making records. Mm. Then the record would come out of the psychology of what we were talking about, mm -hmm. right? So Kamau Georges produced on everything. Like, you know, he didn't even get credit on like Lady Gaga stuff. Mm -hmm. I got the credit, right? Yeah. Me and Snake got the credit, but like, I, I couldn't have done it without him. Mm -hmm. He was the force behind a lot of those records. So Kamau Georges, um, he's in the Virgin Islands. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my best friends. I love him to death. I'd do anything for him. Mm -hmm. um, so I would say he's the number one and maybe the only person that I would like bow down and like you, you helped make me me. Yeah. Um, everybody else has just been kind of on the journey, yeah. moments on the journey. There hasn't been anybody that rode with me, believed in me the whole time, listened to me, helped elevate me. Mm -hmm. There's been, you know, again, there's a bunch of people that have done significant things here and there that helped me, you know, make a, a quick move. Mm -hmm. But know like, like what you are. I know, I give you, like, you know like, what I'm saying? Like, sure. they, couldn't be, they wouldn't be here. Shout like, out to you know? Kamal. I mean, we did a record with y'all together. Yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah. If you got the pockets in it, the living, the hey, hey. One we, life. Yeah, one life. One I forgot life. that. Yeah, Rick Ross yeah, and yeah, Fabulous. Yes, yeah. Why we never put that record out? Uh, I don't know. I still have that record. I don't know whose record it was. I got it. Yeah, because I, I, I don't know if it was an Akon record, because I don't know what we did it for. We just, I mean, we did it at record plant, and we was trying to figure out who it was going to go to. Yeah, but that record is still a big record. Yeah, it is. It was a hard record. Yeah. Tamara always asked to ask question. Last question. Okay, yeah. so this is the guy show. Let's Wait, am I a jerk for only saying one person? No, that's. Good. I know later on I'm going to be on a flight. No, 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 like, no, no, oh, no, shit. No, no, no. no. I should have said no, this. It's great. No, it's great. Your reasoning behind it was a good one. Too. And we're just talking By about. By the way, music. it was more honorable because it was the one person. Right. And we're just we're talking about music. Sure. Obviously, right? Just about you. Yeah, just yeah. period in life, like you know. Yeah, I, I. Nobody holds a candle to come out. Love so that. he's so up here that no one even deserves to be in that category with him, even love if that. they did do stuff for me. I, you know sure. I, mean? I love that. That's a great thought process behind it. Um, so this is the God Show. It stands for Goats and Underdogs. Do you consider yourself... Wait, is the D for dogs? Yeah. yeah. You know, underdogs is one word, right? Under Don't come in here dog. Do some science. U-D. Right. No, but underdogs one word, so it would just be you. <laughs> no, no. It, right. it, so it's God. It's the God Show. The God Show. The God okay. Show. <laughs> the God <laughs> Show. <laughs> Um, do you consider yourself a goat or underdog in the industry? Uh, underdog. Why? I'll always be an underdog. What do you have to accomplish to be considered a goat in your head? There's nothing I could accomplish that would, one, recognize myself as being better than others. Mm -hmm. um, and there's nothing I could accomplish that would make me feel like I did enough. Mm -hmm. uh, so it would be hard to get to a point where I'm like, eh, look what I've done. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm the, I'm the goat. <laughs> and I'm like, no, nah, I'll, I'll always still feel like what's next what more can i do how can i help it's funny because my wife is like how much money do you need to make before you quit right Sorry. and i was like um, um you know maybe you know i threw out a number she's like i don't believe you i don't mm -hmm. think there's no amount of money that would make you stop mm -hmm. but there's an um, there's a amount of money that would make me stop running mm -hmm. and start handing yeah so like when i get to that level all i'll do is I won't be saying, hey, do this thing with me so we can do this. Instead, I'll say, what can I do for you? Yeah, give her. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Well, I want to let you know, we don't let people on this couch if we don't consider them a GOAT. So you don't have to say it. I'm going to say it because I've seen you go from where you were to a massive personality. And, and it was a lot of the inspiration for how I decided to move because I didn't want to go back into a building and I mm -hmm. wanted to build a community so you are a goat, and we celebrate you, and I appreciate you for coming on the show. I Thank swear, you. Well, that's, a lot. I, that's goat talk. Because yeah. I will tell you, back to earlier when we were talking about insecurity or jealousy or stuff, like, like, dude, I know 
I know who I influence. You know, I know. You know what I mean? I'm not going to say it. But, like, it's really rare that somebody will tell you, like, even him just saying, like, yo, you were part of the inspiration. Like, it takes a really confident, dope person to be able to say, yo, you gave me this idea. Or, Absolutely. like, yo, I seen you, and I'm like, fuck, man, I can help, too. I want to do what he's doing. So, like... You know, no, I appreciate that. Go talk to you too, Ray Daniels. <laughs> My brother. Right. Well, shout out to our sponsors. Shout out to Tone Carry. Shout out to Yoko Vaca. And if you're watching this, like, subscribe, share. This is the only way we keep it going. This is the God Show, and we are out. Can we Thank tell? You guys. Can we tell anybody how to follow me or anything? Man, well, I spent two hours. Put your name here, on the like, screen. Okay, good. <laughs>